Alright, hey everyone, um, Teamfight Tactics patch 11.15 is going to be uploading the day I post this video, so it's coming soon. Uh, I know a lot of people have been playing on the PBE, so they know more about what's going on with this patch than probably myself, but I still thought it was worth the time and effort to go through these patch notes, go through all the big changes that are coming with set 5.5, uh, oof, man. 5.5 and with 11.15 because there's quite a few systematic changes that are coming around to uh, move along from some of the lesser popular mechanics of set 5. So with that said, let's go ahead and go on through it. Do 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 do. Um, yeah, I think this comes up later, so we'll talk about it later. We've got some new little legends that you can see here you can get eggs for and try to farm up yourself do, do, do. some more little legends that high noon variant that's nice and a couple new arenas uh, nice little golden bakery I was gonna call it town hall but golden bakery and high noon saloon this one actually looks pretty nice I might I might get this one yeah I kind of like this one Got a new Reckoning Pass and a Pass Plus, which comes with a whole bunch of extra bundles. As you know, here are the two little, little legends that you get. I can't, I can't say little, little legends. It's a, the, they're little legends, not little, little legends. Little, little legends was a dumb thing. Bundles and the cost of the bundles, as you can see here. I myself will probably just get the, the Season Pass, uh, the base Season Pass, and call it a day. It's usually what I do, but if you want to support the game... Try to get your hands on some of these little legends. Get the new arenas. Bam, go ham, bro. Alright, so the big new thing is to coincide with the League of Legends update. Uh, Rise of the Sentinels. Uh, so, new class coming in, Sentinels. Putting a new mission system through this that you can get points for. So on and so forth. Nothing too special, but just new ways that you can try to farm out your uh, pass if you're not one of those people who farms it out in a week, because I know who you are. All right, rank changes. Um, so they're doing a soft reset where you drop down one tier. This has kind of been pretty standard for a while. So like gold two, you're now silver two. Um, if you are master and above, you go down to diamond four. Which is fair. Um, a lot of the diamonds kind of a barrier for most people who are trying to get up to GM. And if you let all these people flounder around in diamonds, some bad ones end up in GM. So putting all the good players in here, weed out some of the fodder, get some of the better players up into diamond and GM early. Uh, five provisional matches, still a thing. So you don't lose LP for your five provisional matches. And the ranked rewards will be coming out on the next patch. Uh, hyper roll emotes. Uh, looks like we're getting some hyper roll rewards, actually. So if you hit blue, purple, or hyper roll, you get an emote. Uh, hyper rolls are not going to get a re hard reset. So they're going. I believe last time they did. Re I think at one point they did hard reset hyper roll. I know hyper roll was something new. This I was. I, I vaguely recall it getting a hard reset at some point. But um, now any anyone at blue or higher goes to the bottom of blue, which I guess that's fair. That's actually where I am, I think. I think I'm sitting in blue, like mid-blue. And rewards will also come in patch 11.16. Okay, now into the actual meat of the set. So new mechanics. The big new mechanic is uh, Lord of Shadow Pangu is deleted. So, now we have, instead of shadow items, we have radiant items. So, radiant items are functionally straightforward, 100% better than their base variant. Uh, the difference is, you only get one per game. And you have to choose them from one of five choices at the 3-6 armory. So, at the 3-6 armory, everyone gets to choose one. Um, what does this do? Uh... So, this kind of will reward flexibility in the game, I would hope. Um, I do worry that if you get, f if you have, I believe it said five, where, where does it say five? Where did I get five? Five choices, yes. If you have to choose from five, um, 
there's almost certainly going to be one you can take along a line that you hard forced. So I'm kind of like, I, I could see this number changing, but doing it as a three, six armory, it's probably correct because if they do it any earlier, then it becomes too easy to transition and hard force the comp doing it this late kind of makes it a little tricky to change your comp into something else. So you want to, so it, it'll reward people who are flexible enough to change their comp, but kind of punish people who are just like hard forcing a single comp and can't find the items. Divine blessing. So the divine blessing is a mechanic. Uh, it, it's, a comeback mechanic, functionally. Um, once you hit below 40 health, you get the Divine Blessing. So, the Divine Blessing is kind of like a random item drop that you're going to get. So, you'll get items, gold, consumables, spatulas, and champions. The other thing I believe it does is Radiant Items sometimes have some buff that you get with Divine Blessing. So, Radiant Items will get even better with the Divine Blessing. Um, uh, just so you know, same essential content. I'm assuming same essential content means that if there's multiple three three cost champions, everyone gets three cost champions. If there's multiple item components, everyone gets multiple item components, but the components themselves are randomized, just like the champions would be randomized. But if you get like consumables or spatulas, those are probably going to be the same across the board. Well, I mean, spatulas are obviously going to be the same because there's no different kind of spatulas. But what I mean is that if you get a spat in your Divine Blessing, I'm assuming everybody gets a splat. Tome of Traits. So... So the way the Tome of Traits works, I, I'm kind of iffy on this mechanic. I'm not sure how I feel about it, and I'm not sure how other people are playing it. The idea is to like get some more craziness into the game, um, make it so that you're not playing the same exact composition every game, but you have some freedom to rotate in and out a handful of units. So the idea with the Divine Blessing, um, the Tome, is occasionally when the Divine Blessing comes up, you get the Tome. Uh, the tome is a usable item that will be on your bench. Uh, when you use it, you get a shop of four emblems to choose from. They are entirely random, including ones that cannot be built by spatulas. So, it's entirely random. You get to pick one of four, and it occasionally comes up in your Divine Blessing. Um, like I said, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like it's kind of inserting randomness for the sake of inserting randomness. Um, it, it is interesting in that it's going to tell lower level players that you can play something different just be and it will be more optimal. Because the way most players honestly play the game is they kind of look at a chart and they just hard force a comp in this particular direction and don't really do anything original. Um, which is fair because that's kind of the way the game works and that some comps are just straight up going to be better. But hey, it's, it's just kind of the nature of the game how it works. This is supposed to put some more spicy randomness into it. Okay, system changes. Loot orbs. We have removed the four cold low roll start. Uh, pros hate the four gold start. They really hate the four gold start. Um, I don't. I don't know what else to say. The four gold start is one of the worst openers you can get in the game. It's like three. I think it's like three items and Nikos, and and four gold. I think that's literally the opener. Um, it's it's you can't eco out of it. It's too hard. You don't have enough gold to get enough two stars to do anything. It's a very tough opener to play. Uh, you almost have to e force Eco, lose the opening rounds, and pray you can make the comeback. Which, uh, you could make the comeback, but you're, you're already a pretty far step behind your opponents. Okay. Lowered the average value of bonus orbs slightly. So, lowered the average number of bonus orbs slightly. Uh, small orbs average value goes from 2.53 to 3 gold. This actually is a pretty good change, I think. 
Um, I think it might, it must have been pretty randomized between two to three champions within the small orbs or just playing gold. I guess moving it up to three. I, I'm trying to like mental math what this looks like exactly as I'm playing. Oh, small orbs containing two one cost champions, one one cost. Three one cost champions. Okay, yeah. So this is essentially what it, what has happened. They've added value if you get so you don't just get two. Okay, this one this one's the only one I'm going to point at though I think because this allows for some high roll starts. Um, you can pretty easily like get lucky and instantly hit like a bunch of two cost or uh, two stars like very early in the game. So this this one I'll keep an eye on because it's interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, this one's probably fine. I don't think adding one gold. I, I The issue with the two-cost champ is that you didn't get two one-cost champs, which you probably would have rather had. So adding the extra gold is probably good. Uh, small orbs gain two gold, now become three gold. I mean, that just aligns with the other one. Medium orbs. Uh, average value on medium orbs go down. So... I feel like this was already a chance. It might have been a three and a couple and a, and a one... So, medium orbs, you can now get a 3 and a 2. Medium orbs, you can get Nico, a 2 cost, and is now a Nico, a 2 cost, and gold. I wonder why that wasn't a gold in the first place. Because usually when you get a Nico, you always get gold with it. Because it's kind of understood, particularly in the early game, that a Nico is not very useful. Um, where Nico is useful is near the end. Gold orbs, uh, you can get a Tome of Traits. Gold orbs containing spats and Nico's help drop rate lowered slightly. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I did kind of notice that with set five. Uh, there was there was quite a few gold orbs going around and quite a few spatulas going around. I had one game where I actually managed to have two dark spats and I managed to make a dark force and another... Oh, I can't even remember what else I made. Um, I mean, it was another emblem. But, um, yeah, these uh, spats, spats were dropping a bit too much, I thought. Just kind of my opinion. Minimum item components received is now 10 components plus one radiant item after the 4-7. Seven, seven. So, there's a standardized thing with the 4-7 raptors. That's 4-7 raptors, if you don't know, is the point where you're it's supposed to have, air quotes, all your items. I, I put that in air quotes because the armory has kind of changed this. Um... You don't get components after 4-7. Um, I, I, I say that in air quotes because armories are still a thing and you can still get them from armories. But there's you, you won't be getting components out of PvE rounds is essentially what I'm trying to say. And all of the carousels are going to be fully completed items as well until I think stage 6 sometimes. some You'll have some components in that as well. Um, but the point being is that at 4-7, you will have 10 components and 1 Radiant item. 10 components, 1 Radiant item. Uh, it's a good standardization point. Um, it, kind of 5-1 is considered the end game. You, you should have your transition mostly completed, unless you're doing a slow roll. Not much to say here. I, I do like that this is kind of a standard thing for TFT, and it kind of has been for a long time. Um... The one thing I will say is, uh, old hats like me, um, at 5-1 we slammed all of our items because there was no point in holding on to them because we weren't going to see components. That's not entirely true because of armories. Um, sometimes it's wise to just hold on to your items to 5-2 to see if you get another armory. And generally, if you don't get an armory, then you have to slam your items because there's nothing you can do with them. Just kind of a note of caution about this, this statement here. The Armory. Increased odds of 4-2 Armory to 100%, but pulled back on the 5-2 to compensate. Removal of removal of components from 5-2 is our way of saying Raptors will be the last place to get components. Remember what I said before about Raptors are the last place to get components? Um, yeah, I think this, this kind of messed with a lot of the old hats in the game that just... that would just slam all their items at 5-1. Um, yeah, actually, what I said before... Take that back. Slam all your items at 5-1. There's no point to it. Um, the armory at 5-2 will not have components. 2-2 uh, armory will have two standard components. 
The 3-2 armory is moved to 3-6 and now has 5 radiant. So there's no more 3-2 armory. It's moved to 3-6 uh, and is always going to be radiant items. 4-2 armory is now guaranteed. We'll have 2 components, 3 components, or 3 components and 1 special item. That's interesting that they made this that they made this this random. I'm surprised they didn't just make it three components. 5-2 armory is less likely, never has components. 6-2, uh, 7-2 two, two armory is unchanged. Um, I think the only thing, uh, like this is kind of just a change from the functional settings of them getting rid of shadow items. The 2-2 two, two armory, I used to have issues with because it was very common to get an item and the shadow variant of said item in that armory that's frustrating that's like really frustrating because that that really makes it too difficult for you to move your composition in particular directions and forces you to go one way even though maybe you don't have the items to go that one way but with shadow items being gone uh that should be fixed so when you get two items here or two components here it should be two different components and that actually being helpful i hope Carousel changes. Uh, stage 5 carousel can now sometimes be componentless, unbuildable emblems. I wonder if they mean they can be all emblems. That would be interesting. It probably means just um, a couple emblems on the carousel. Stage 6 plus sometimes can be all full items. Um, yeah, stage 6 plus sometime is usually half full items and half components. The reason why they have components at this late stage in the game is that it's not uncommon for just, like, to throw an item on a unit. It, it, you can end up with an odd number of components, and you just end up throwing an item on a champion just for the bonus stats. And occasionally, uh, you can get a component that combines with that item to be something actually useful to you. doesn't happen too often, but it does. It's been known to happen. Stage 6 and now drop component that unbuildable M. So same as stage 5. Champion count. It's an odd change. There is one less 3 cost in the set. Um, I'm kind of curious to like know the logic as to why they are lowering the total champion count. Um, this is something that Riot has said on multiple occasions that when they change the number of champions in the pool, it does, like, nutso amounts of damage to the current systems that they have in place. It changes the value of everything in the game just because they remove one champion out of the pool. So, I'm interested in what in particular this does. I suspect um, that... Three cost carries weren't happening as much as Riot wanted them to, or that people going for three cost carries were dying more often than Riot wanted them to. One of the things with three cost carries is that you have to three star them. You're not going to have a three cost carry carry you through the game without three starring it. But if there are too many champions in the three cost pool, that makes it kind of difficult to find said champion uh it could get to a point where your four cost will be easier to find in two star than your three cost it's it's been known to happen in some metas so i suspect that's why they're lowering it i just hope that there are no aftershocks to this change hyper roll added five second planning timers two three one five two so this so i'll three six so all of these are like planning rounds but i don't know what six i guess th six three technically is a planning round because you go to six four six five six six gold income so they increase gold income um my opinion is that at this point in the game and hyper roll you the only reason you would have gold is if you were hunting down um you by now you probably should have it your five cost at two star so i guess it becomes down to like what are you trying to three star i'm and i'm not sure how useful that is i don't know i don't know what gold does at this point in the game 
4-2 armory is likely but not guaranteed and offers either three components of interesting it's not guaranteed uh, they put the radiant armory at 5-2 that's probably a good place to do it 5-3 armory is likely if there is no 4-1 and has the same offer structure huh don't know new champions so I'm not going to go through all of the individual champions but I'll go through the new traits that they have so one of the new traits is cannoneers so cannoneers um interestingly i i would probably compare them to blade masters in the old set but instead of getting like extra attacks on your attacks they instead uh make a shot that explodes explosions michael bay uh so we're getting four of them um I haven't really seen them in the meta on the PBE charts, but I like the idea. Sentinels. So, at the start of combat, Sentinel with the highest health gains a shield that grants attack speed each time it is applied. When the shield is destroyed or expires, it will pass to the ally with the lowest percent health. Both the shield and the attack speed bonus will increase as you recruit more sentinels. Okay, so what does this do? So at the start of combat, you get a shield. The shield gives you an attack speed boost. When the shield is destroyed, it will then pass that shield to an ally that has less health, that has the lowest health. And that ally gets a shield, that ally gets an attack speed boost. And we just continue on from there until you don't, until essentially it has no unit to pass on to. So the shield kind of just stays around forever until like everything's gone off your field. It's worth noting that it doesn't, it starts on a sentinel, but it will pass to any ally. So it doesn't just pass on to sentinels. It just starts on a sentinel. Anyway, this is one of their big verticals. It's a three, six, nine. It has eight champions in it including two multi-champions here in a draconic knight and a legionnaire skirmisher um this is this is from what i've seen probably the most interesting developed trait in this set i think a lot of the pros are really interested in because it's an incredibly flexible trait even though it's a it's a high vertical so three six three six nine instead of two four not two four eight um it has it just has a lot of utility like built into it. Inanimate in the start of combat, inanimate champions summon a hollowed mist that seeps through their surrounding one hex for a few seconds, granting all allies within damage reduction from enemies outside the mist. So basically, if you stand in this mist, you have damage reduction. Pretty simple stuff. Um, I've been told it, this is only specifically on uh, Gwen. I've been told this is actually a really nice trait, but it's pretty tricky to use uh, effectively because it, enemies can kind of walk through it. it the, the mist itself does not move. So you have to be like really careful where you place it. Victorious. When a victorious champion scores a kill, the next attack is empowered and deals 40% of the missing of the target's missing health as bonus magic damage. So that's what Garen does. Yeah, sure. We, we we kill something, we we deal more damage. Simple, simple. Fiddlesticks. Interesting on this one. Um, so fiddlesticks is replacing her eyes as an a bomb mystic. Revenant is an a bomb mystic. Revenant clearly one of the bigger one of the carries in this game. Which, which if you haven't noticed one thing about TFT, anytime a mystic is a carry, it tends to do kind of crazy things. But anyway, this is a very big, big unit here in terms of the traits it has. These are pretty significant traits in the current meta. Anyway, remove traits. Uh, Verdant is gone. Yeah, sadly, Verdant didn't get the play it probably deserved. It was a nice trait, but the issue that came up was that combining the three units, there just wasn't a lot of comps that just played two of those units there were comps that played one of them there was rarely a comp that played two of them and there was no comp that played three of them um but i liked the idea of using 
the trait as a, an anti-CC tool. And I've had a lot of matches where that was actually useful. So I would not be surprised if Verdant comes back. But they just need to be on champions that people can actually like combine and play. Dragon Slayer is going away. <sighs> Why do we get rid of Dusk trade all the time? Dusk is so cool. Ah. Um, yeah, just a little disheartening that we lost that. God King is gone. Um, Garen won. Darius is dead. Yay. Coven. Coven was a cool idea, but it it kind of flamed out. Like it, it eventually came down to the point that Coven wasn't even really that good an opener. Um, it was a neat idea. I I I I think what the real lesson from Coven is that requiring three champions for it was probably a bit much. Remove champions. These champions are dead. So most of these are probably uh, come from these traits, but there's others as well. So Warwick's gone. Victor's gone. When I said remove champions from these traits, clearly none of them are. Uh, Trundle is gone. Pantheon's gone. Mordkaiser. And then I do three Dragon Slayers. Uh, Lissandra, LeBlanc, Morgana. So all Coven's gone. Kindred. That's disheartening. Kindred was one of was probably one of the cooler champions this set in terms of utility. Rise. Rise was nuts. Tarek's annoying, but good. And Darius is dead. <laughs> Trait changes. So they've reworked a handful of traits. Um, the biggest things are are the Forgotten Champions and the idea that they want Monstrosity to be a beefcake rather than an assassin. Which, if you haven't realized, what all the Monstrosity does is he jumps into the back line, running through an entire front line, and just beats up on whatever's in the back line. And it's kind of like, he's an assassin, isn't he? Well, anyway. Abomination rework. So the abomination health and AD is now based on stage. So at different stages. So oh oh okay, this is interesting. So his actual stats are like they compare are comparable to what we have um, right now. So the A bomb three is what you have at stage three. A bomb four is what you end up with stage four. That's a really strong stage four, by the way. And A bomb five stage five. A, a bomb tails all pretty hard though. Ally deaths required for monstrosity goes from three to two. See, this one in particular is why he ended up being an assassin, is because you lost you 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 often would like lose what your carries were already. So he there was already like low number of units on the field, and he would just run through a front line right to a back line. So with him now popping up when you lose two a bomb champions, um. <sighs> Oh, sorry, I had to yawn. When you lose uh, two A bomb champions, or it's it, it makes it so he's more likely to engage on a front line rather than a back line. Monstrosity Neil now deals magic damage to the areas where he stops charging. Enraged life steal was actually increased, Ugh. but no longer scales off AP. Okay, that's fine. You scared me there for a second. Uh, increase the enrage duration. I, that, that's fair. As long as as long as life steals no longer scaling off AP, that was yeah. That was actually kind of one of the crazier things in Monstrosity was how much he how much self heal he had, based off just the the scaling of AP. Uh, a little lower crit and MR at uh, three and f oh, four and five. Little less health. Significantly less damage. Um, like, like they said, he's not an assassin, he's a beefcake. Uh, health per star level. Oh, that's right, he gets bonus health based on your champion's star level. Um, hmm. I don't know about this one. I guess we'll just see. And the bonus AD, wow, they basically just cut that in half. That's kind of brutal. Forgotten Champions, um, so Forgotten Champions, to my understanding, function now what, like Warlords, so every time they're in combat and win, they get bonus 10% stats, stacking up to five times. Um, it's Warlords, I don't know what else you want me to say. Trade Adjustments, Assassin, uh, so... Assassins were an interesting one. I saw a lot of complaints on Reddit that 
they thought assassins were kind of getting crushed here. I, I'm not going to disagree, but I will say it's really only, I think, six assassins that's getting crushed. And six assassins is kind of just a bait trait anyway. Like, you, you almost never see four assassins. You'll see four, but you almost never see six. So, uh, kind of like whatever to it. Brawler, uh, we got new brawlers, so we have Brawler 6. I'm assuming it's a meme, because I don't think there are any carries in Brawler outside of Warwick, who is gone, so it won't be Warwick. New, new, I guess. Uh, Dawnbringer heal is being scaled down a little bit. Yeah, Dawn, e even right now, the Dawnbringer healing and the Nightbringer healing, or Nightbringer shield, I guess, is uh, excessive. Just a titch. Uh, cutting down the ticks on the healing. Yeah. Well. Yeah, this one's not that significant. Uh, the damage amp. It's not really a big deal. Um, interesting that they're lowering the average value of Draconic. In fact, they're lowering it quite a bit. I've never thought that Draconic was really that good great to be honest draconic um there were times that draconic was really good right now draconic's kind of okay in the meta i'm not quite sure what it looks like in 5.5 but to see it kind of hit and particularly five kind of got crushed here i i'm not quite sure on this one it is worth noting that draconic does get you like a lot of gold value i just don't know I guess this this one right here that I have highlighted probably isn't that significant, but this this feels like it, it turns it turns five draconic into more of a meme than it already is. Hellion, um, Hellion is no longer so Hellion was kind of a trial attempt. Um, so Hellion was a two five seven, so now it's going to be just a straight two four six eight, and the attack seed. Um, is getting scaled accordingly. So, Hellion 3 does not scale well into the late game. Hell and the reason why that is, is because Hellions just get murdered. Um, none of them, it, it doesn't even really matter what their star level is. At Hellion 3, they would just all just get one shot by whatever the carry is. And the new one would come in and would just get one shot. There's just not a lot of value at Hellion 3. So in order to get that value, you had to go up to Hellion 5, where you had, I believe it was a 55% attack speed boost, which going from 5 to 55 is kind of crazy. But the reason why that was is because if it was anything but 5 in the early game, uh, Hellion would just roll over everybody. Whereas in the late game, this 5 is useless. And the respawning mechanic is useless. So, I greatly appreciate them changing this to a 2 four, six, eight, Because I could see value in having 4 Hellions in a comp. That's something that could actually happen. I could see value in having 6. Just a full long combo of Hellions. That seems like it's something that could have value. Um, 8 seems like a solid meme. Uh, ironclad armor getting scaled down a bit. Yeah, ironclad's really good. A lot of people kind of sleep on ironclad. It's a very good trait. Not much else to say. Uh, Mystic five added. They also toned down the scaling on Mystic. So, so so Mystic they changed. So Mystic became instead of being like a two four six that it's been in the past. This particular set it was a two three four. I'm assuming now it's a two three four five. I suspect this is because they added more Mystics, and a lot of them are probably more playable and fit in the comps a lot better than previous um, last set. So, it's probably fine. Nightbringer shield scaling. Yeah, we said... I said the same... I said before that the Nightbringer shield and the Dawnbringer health regen is kind of crazy. That said, they're buffing... The, the main difference is, is that Dawnbringer is a comp while Nightbringer really isn't. Um, I think, uh, to be honest, I think Nightbringer really kind of is a comp. Just no one plays it because it's, it's very... 
you need very specific situations in order to play it because its carry is a Felios, and Felios just scales better with Rangers than he does with Nightbringer. If you build your comp right. If you don't build your comp right, you, Nightbringer can actually be really good. But if you if you build a Ranger comp correctly for Rangers, just better. But I digress. Um, they're buffing uh, Nightbringers at 2, 4, 6, 8. So they buff 6 and 8 here. Uh, yeah, I, I Nightbringer 6 should be a comp, and it just kind of isn't. That said, the, the bonus damage of 8 is also going on. Yeah, it's just a meme. Uh, Ranger 6 has been added. That attack speed boost is crazy. Dear Lord, that attack speed boost is insanity. I'm assuming there's only 5 Rangers in the set. I, I feel like I'm safe saying there's only 5 Rangers in the set. I haven't actually looked that up. And that in order to do this, you need a spat. Redeemed, um... Yeah, the redeemed scaling is kind of out of control at times. They're just like... So, what's interesting with redeemed is you see a redeemed comp. And you look at it and you're like, you don't think this comp is that powerful. Because in a normal situation, the units aren't that good. Uh, there are redeemed units that are good. You have Lux, you have Vel'Koz, um, but in general, the units are kind of just bleh. However, when you get a redeemed comp rolling, you get obnoxious ass stats, and you get rolled over, and you get really confused because these units are not actually as good as you th as good as you think they are. Or, I should say, this trait makes these units way better than you realize. So, so it's kind of scaling down, I guess. I think that's, I think it's appropriate. Revenant 5 added. So, Revenant 5, we go, so, 2, 3, 4, 5, and dealing 25% more damage. Um... Yeah, Revenant's a good trait. It's like there's there's no reason why you shouldn't. If you have a Revenant champion in your comp, there's really no reason why you shouldn't play another. It's it's, it's a free bad GA. Skirmisher. Um. So skirmisher, I, I I perfectly understand what's going on here. Early game skirmisher is at shield is actually really good. Mid game skirmisher six shield is actually kind of good. Uh, Skirmisher 9 is a meme. So, that's why we get this big buff here, but we get these little nerfs here. Also, attack damage boost. Um, interesting, they nerfed. They, they did one point nerf to 6. It probably... I, I don't know if it really needed it. Maybe it... I think with the shield going down, this probably was unnecessary, but I'm not going to say it was a bad idea. I'd have to see this one in action, to be honest. Spellweaver AP boost. That, uh, this should be a 246. Six of boost. Yeah, so they're just buffing Spellweaver 6. I, I don't think you'd ever play Spellweaver 6 without a spat on a like frontline champion. Uh, champion changes. I don't think there's... I'll probably just scroll over some of these that I think are less relevant. Leona's health nerf. That's actually pretty relevant. Leona's one of the stronger, like, early game tanks ever in the game. Um, it was, it was actually kind of interesting, the set. The frontline units at the one cost frontline units were all, like, really, really good this set. So, I, I, I'm not surprised to see a couple of them get hit with a beat stick throughout this set. But anyway, um, so they're nerfing the 2-star and the 3-star shield while also increasing the total mana cost. It's, it's fine. Oh, Cavalier nerfs. That's interesting. So, Hecarim's mana cost is, like, getting shot through a cannon. Yeah, that's... That's... that's yeah. Um... Interesting, okay, so they've made the health scaling 
Okay. Oh, they remove the health scaling. That should fix a lot of the issues that I personally have. Well, kind of. Um, this makes one-star Hecarim kind of good. But it makes two-star Hecarim kind of, like... I guess technically he's still better because he'll do more damage. But he has less health. While three-star is 100% a nerf. It probably makes, like, Cavalier reroll worse. Um... Syndra, they may, oh yeah, not Syndra, Sejuani is now a brawler. That, that significantly makes Sejuani much better. Um, yeah, this is a good change. Even with these stat nerfs, because she's a brawler and a cavalier and a nightbringer. Um, yeah, this is fine. God damn it, why are we buffing Syndra? Fuck Syndra, I hate Syndra. All my friends hate Syndra. Grr. Since his grab units will now be untargetable. Yeah, this has been a bug that's been around this whole set. And uh, the damage. Oh, good. We get damage nerf at one star and two star. Yay. Um, yeah, I dislike Syndra. I think she does too much work for backline defenses. It's nice that we have a unit that does that. I just wish there was a better way to play around it. There really just is not a good way to play around good positioning of Syndra. And when I say good positioning, I mean put your carry in a corner and put Syndra beside it. Alright. Uh, tier 3 champs. Uh, doesn't look like much here worth talking about. Ash is no longer Verdant because Verdant doesn't exist. Buff Lulu attack speed. I have questions about that. Uh, new new mana adjustment. Chinese new new dead. Forever. That's true. I should just make that a meme. Chinese Nu Nu is now officially dead. And then we all realize that it's not actually dead. Whatever. I digress. Actually, technically, I think this is better. Um, yeah, I'm going to be honest. This really, I don't even think is that is really a nerf. This might actually be a buff. Because you now start with 30, so it only takes 60 to get that first chomp in. Uh, your first chomp is almost always at, like, near full health. So, you, your first chomp near usually just instant kills. So, this could very well just be a straight-up buff. Um, it, it, I'll have to keep an eye on this one, because I, I think this one might... This starting mana total is might be too high. Zyra, so they're... Uh, yeah, nerfing Zyra 3. Yeah. Zyra, Zyra 3 rerolls, like, too free. Ophelia. So, Ophelia has basically got a huge rework. And I wasn't really tracking exactly what they did to him. So, they, they nerfed his damage. They nerfed his mana. The scaling now goes to the moon. Yo, yeah, well, that is literally to the moon. Um... The base damage on the spell, that, that, that doesn't really change. Targets increased by one. So, he now basically... So, the way Aphelios kind of worked was that you just gave him a lot of attack speed. And you gave him a last whisper. And he would just kind of chunk through most of the board over time. This is more just like pure AD scaling. Plus an extra target. What they're basically telling you here is, put a death blade on this guy. That's what you're hearing here. This dude wants a death blade. Uh, it's probably going to be his best item. Probably even better than IE. Yeah, it's probably much better than IE. I have to keep an eye on this. I, I, this is this is a fine change. I don't know about this max mana. I, I guess it makes sense if they added this much freaking scaling on that attack. But yeah, he just wants a death blade. <laughs> I guess a jewel gauntlet's probably good if the IE doesn't make the spell crit. Yeah, it just depends on if the while the scaling is AD based, um, how much of how much of it is whether it's like a physical attack or whether it's a spell attack is kind of relevant. Whether or not a jewel gauntlet or an IE is better. Diana. Increase Diana's health. Actually, they're doing a lot here. 
Wow, they just like straight up buff the hell out. I guess it's because Dragon Slayer is removed. I don't know if like all these changes needed to happen, especially this health and damage. But um, it, it makes sense if you look at it from the Dragon Slayer change. Jack's health. This is probably because Ironclad's getting nerfed. Um, I don't think having a carry with Ironclad was a good idea. Just kind of my opinion. I think it's counter and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to have a carry that is Ironclad so that he's 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 frontline and a carry. Uh Karma. Why are we nerfing Karma One? That's why everyone dies in this game, because they're playing Karma One. They'd have Karma Two as well, but I don't think that one these aren't very significant changes, I'm just kind of being angry for no reason. Garen. It completely changes the spell over on me. Shield bonus. So, it, it kind of looks like he's just kind of getting straight nerfs here. But, in return, he has the victorious buff. He's kind of just like straight nerfs to me. I don't know what else to say, guys. It just looks like a straight nerf. Heimerdinger. I think Heimerdinger, like, I don't think, like, hit the mark correctly. Um, but I, I think this is it. But they're nerfing the damage. Like, I get it. Like, Heimer 2 Itemize is a pretty good champion. But, like, straight Heimerdinger is, like, not very good. So, I'm kind of, like, iffy on this change. I'm not sure what to think about it. I'll just ha I'll have to play with it before I really get it. Kale Ascension 1, true damage. Yeah. Yeah. Teemo gets a starting mana buff. This is actually a nice change. Teemo's Doppel Elegance gets Trigger Cool. Oh, that's brutal. Um... I think these two combined are probably going to be a little messy for some people. Um, this makes this makes Teemo a lot better. If the if the Doppel Hellion can trigger Cruel, that's pretty brutal. Item changes. Whew. We're almost there, guys. We're 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 getting there. So the Hellion emblem is now made with bow and spat. So that was previously a Legionnaire emblem. Uh, Legionnaire. Never really became it. it. It was a thing early on. It's not really a thing, to be honest. Cavalier is made with Vest and Spat, previously an Ironclad. That makes more sense. Uh, Cavalier is a much more interesting trait to give to a unit than Ironclad. So I approve of this. And they both kind of function similarly. It's just Cavalier is just more interesting to work with. Chalice of Power Buff. I don't think anyone built chalices anymore. Dragon's Claw is being reworked again. Grants 200 bonus magic resist. Being hit with magic or true damage from an ability. So it has to be an ability. Launch a fireball at abilities. Caster dealing magic damage. So I, I suspect the idea here is to stop making unkillable champions. But to instead make more champions that just kind of have abilities that function off to make the item like more utility driven rather than just like stacking all of these defensive items to make an unkillable champion it, it makes sense i just i just can't envision how useful this is i am curious how this functions with multi-hit abilities yeah, I have to see. I wonder how this functions with multi-hit abilities. Hands of Justice. So, they're essentially... So... So, Hands of Justice, at one point, became a decent item. Then we had Shadow Hand of Justice. And Shadow Hand of Justice was pretty much a straight-up better item. Because it had more consistent utility than base... Hands of Justice. Um, yeah. I, I, I think this change is good. 
after watching how often people built Shadow Hands of Justice and just kind of ignored Hands of Justice. It was just... Be, having both inherent and making one of them better is probably better than just having one on, one off. Infinity Edge, wow, they're bringing back the extra crit strike damage on Infinity Edge. Yo, they got rid of that because it was kind of obnoxious how effective it was on Assassin. How needed IE was on Assassin. It's still kind of needed, but... Stacks now granted on attack rather than crit. So that makes it just way easier to stack. This shouldn't change the item too much. I know this, this part probably looks a little worrying to people. But one of the things with Titan's Resolve is that you you could only put it on like frontliners. This you might be able to get away with putting it on carries to get the utility. Um, it's fine. Uh, everyone liked Banshee's Claw so much they brought back Banshee's Claw. <laughs> uh, Zeke's Herald. Uh, we weren't building Zeke's Herald. So, I think part of the reason why we weren't building a handful of these items like Trap Claw. Well, I should highlight Trap Claw. Trap Claw, Zeke's Herald, Dragon Claw. These items were like better used. They, they had a lot more utility than they've had in the past. Uh, the components that make these items. So, especially Bell. Like, Bell, I would argue that this particular set, defensive items were the best they have ever been in TFT. Probably the best since me, mech, me, me, no pivot. So, these getting a buff, I don't know if it was really necessary, but... We'll see where it lands, because I think it might have just been a function of the set that those particular items weren't being used, and that defensive items being much better was probably part of the problem there. Bug fixes. They happened. I don't see anything important to talk about here. Anyway, that's it for all of the changes. We managed to keep this under an hour. I'm going to kind of quickly go over some of my thoughts here and kind of give a closing to set five. Um, so, I'm not going to pull any punches here. I think set five was probably the worst set of TFT so far. Uh, I think there were good ideas here in terms of instead of focusing on the champions and new systems, focusing on the items. But I think the issue came, and I think it was pretty clear to most people, the items made everything like far more confusing. TFT is already a very confusing game. It can be very difficult to get new players into and understand what's going on and how various systems work. When you start changing things that most people would say are hard-locked into the systems like items um it starts to kind of mess with people uh you, you start kind of not understanding what's going on or what you should be doing i think shadow items were probably the worst perpetrator of this in all of tft in all of tft history really um you would get a shadow item and then you wouldn't understand the drawbacks of making a particular shadow item with the shadow component so you'd have the shadow component that makes an item that you don't actually want to make but you didn't know that when you picked up that shadow component it it just it's just too much for people to have to remember and maybe even too much variance in the game So, I mean, that's kind of my main issue with the set, is I think shadow items were just... It was just too much for people. Now, moving into this set with radiant items, I mean, that's already better. We've removed the fact that these shadow items have drawbacks, and instead putting in radiant items that are strictly better. Not just, not just better, strictly better. They're inherently better than what the base item is. Other drawbacks to set, um, 
One common complaint I heard about this set was that verticals were too strong. Um, one of the issues that comes up when verticals are too strong is that the game becomes too easy to play. You don't flex. You're going to know what comp you're going to play at 2-1 and nothing will force you off it. That's not 100% true, but I think at lower elos, it was pretty much true. I think below diamond, it was probably 100% true that everyone knew what they were playing at by 2-2. Two -two. You just weren't going to pivot. You may have had an idea of where you could go, but you just weren't going to pivot. Um, it was very easy to tunnel vision, is, is kind of what I'm saying. Whereas in previous sets of TFT, you kind of needed the flexibility. Particularly in set four when you were offered like a good chosen champion. It was like you needed to be able to pivot to use that good chosen champion. Whereas in this set, who cared? You hard forced a comp. No one no Go. Go do your thing. Um, I'm hoping the thought is of radiant items and having radiant items given to you very late would maybe change that but i'm gonna be honest it probably will not um we'll see where where it goes my hope is that the armory changes alone will open up some comp variety because i think with how complicated the shadow items were to work with for most people that people were more likely to just play similar lines that they've been playing all set. I mean, look at me. I played basically nothing but Dawnbringer this patch. Dawnbringer is probably not even the best comp this patch. It's just all I've played because I've gotten comfy with the items that you make off it. I'll occasionally play Forgotten because all you do to play Forgotten is take more Shadow components and just draft every, every Forgotten champion you find. But I digress. I hope that these new Radiant items kind of work to fix that. In terms of the champions coming out, the traits coming out, traits coming in, um, not too much to talk about. I think some of the champions, particularly at like the five cost end, uh, just like, I would have liked to see some of them hang around. I think Dragon Slayer is a really cool trait. I'm a little sad to see it go, especially more Kaiser. Um, I, I think like frontline tanky carry champions are just so rare in TFT that anytime you see one, you just like have to smile. It's basically been riven in more Kaiser, <laughs> and that's it. But both times in set four and set five. They were part of the first group of champions that got the boot. Um, so, a little sad to see them go. Um, Kindred. Kindred's a pretty cool champion just to kind of pick up and fits into a lot of comps. A little sad to see her go. I guess the logic behind getting rid of Kindred is that everyone plays Kindred. Because it's easy. And provides a lot of utility. So... Otherwise, uh, stuff coming in, I think the only thing I'm going to kind of poke at is Cannoneer. I'm not sure how we play a set that has both Cannoneer and Ranger, two, kind of, two comps that kind of seem like they would function fairly similarly, in that they're all like backline ranged champions with either utility or damage. So... I'm a little iffy on how the set's going to work carrying both of these. On the plus side, um, I would kind of hope like some of the lesser used traits from the previous set, notably Nightbringer, uh, Spellweaver, Spell, Spellweaver, yeah, I'll, I'll say Spellweaver, uh, Legionnaire. Um, these traits, like, and even, like, Invoker and Renewer. Like, these trades, like, we barely, like, touch the surface of these. I mean, Invoker, maybe not. Maybe we did. Maybe we played more of. But, like, how often did you see Legionnaire 6? I mean, I think I built it maybe, like, super early in the game. In, in this set. That was about it. 
Spellweaver was like only played with Cavalier. So uh, I hope that we see more of these, but I don't think enough has changed here to really pull that out. Um, other things of note to call out, there's a new Draconic champion in the pool. Which means in order to hit Draconic 5, you no longer need just Heimerdinger. I can just open this up. You no longer just need Heimerdinger. You can run with these five champions and you'll have Draconic 5. Uh, that's probably part of the reason why the value of Draconic is being decreased. Draconic 5 at least. Uh, Hellion. Uh, I believe there are more Hellions now. Yeah, they added a Hellion at 2. Without taking any out, I think. So... That, combined with the fact that Hellion's now at 2, 4, 6, 8, is probably a pretty good change. I think Hellion 4 is something we'll have to keep our eye on. I'm glad. Nightbringer. I'm hoping Nightbringer's a better comp. It's it's You just like couldn't play it before. I think the only issue is now there's only 6 Nightbringers. So, like, and they I, they did buff Nightbringer, but there's only 6. So, I don't think... I don't think this is something we're going to be seeing a lot of. Especially also Dragon Slayer is gone. Dragon Slayer is another comp you kind of ran alongside Nightbringer. We'll see. Sentinels, the new comp. It has a shitload of champions in it. Um, I think I think you'll see a good bit of it. Especially since like there's four champions in the one and two cost range. Which makes it like very compelling to play three. Assassins, Brawlers... They added a new Brawler. Well, I shouldn't say that. They didn't add a new Brawler. They made Sejuani a Brawler, which makes Brawler 4 pretty easy to hit. There's also Brawler 6, but there's only 5 Brawlers here. So is there a Brawler? There must be a Brawler emblem. Cannoneer. Interesting. There's a Cannoneer 6. I'm not sure how exactly Cannoneer 6... How Cannoneer emblem works. I don't know what that looks like. Sounds interesting, though. Cavalier. I'm surprised they're keeping Cavalier 3, to be honest. I, I'm kind of of the opinion that maybe they should just go 2-4 on Cavalier. But, I mean, they kept 3, so... Makes Rel still one of the better champions in the game. Invoker's Unchained. Invoker's actually pretty good. I kind of, like, low-sold it there. Knight, Legionnaire. Legionnaire, I don't think, is working as a vertical, to be honest. It worked kind of earlier, but I'm not quite sure it's working as much now. Especially since the Legionnaire worked really well with Morkaiser, and Morkaiser is gone. Mystic, no real change here. Ranger, no real change here. Renewer, no real change here. Skirmisher, Skirmisher should still be a comp. I don't really think a lot changed on it, outside of the fact it doesn't have Dragon Slayer anymore. Um, that's probably, actually, that's kind of, that's kind of a big deal, but I think there are enough pieces around here to work Skirmisher into a new, new comp, where you run six Skirmisher and you have two other champions, probably Mystics, because that's the way we play this game. Spellweaver, Spellweaver. Um, I don't think you ever actually, like, play for Spellweaver, ever. Anyway, that's it for the set. I don't think I'll have anything else. Are you going to... Oh, I have to go back. I don't really think I have much else to talk about here. I'm not going to go through all the Radiant items. Uh, I'll let people do that on, your, on their own. But in general, all of the Radiant items are strictly better than their base version. Pretty simple stuff. Anyway, uh, that's it for this set review. I managed to actually get it over an hour, which was my goal of the past five minutes. So I shall see you all around. Peace.